I've reinvented myself. But in point of fact, they had to build a special wing at Cooperstown in my honor. All right, here's Cookie Randolph. Can he do it again? Walk with us through the hall of fame. Admire with us every famous name. There it is! And listen to the story Cookie Randolph. of how they won their glory. It's fifth home run of the game. He's incredible! And we go So true. So very, very true. It's a moment of holy religion. Now, now ladies and gentlemen, Earl's Bible Corner. <laughs> That's right, my friend. It's a close-up look at a familiar parable from the Bible. And today's feature is the story of Jonah and the whale. Good morning, Earl. Well, good morning, Dave, and your chainsaw, and your silly gun. Good-looking broad down there. Thank you. This is Earl's Bible Corner. I am Earl. Today's feature, the story of Jonah and the whale. <clears throat> so there's this guy named Jonah, and he's pretty depressed, feeling kind of down on account the guy's got a broad's name. Uh. Jonah. I mean, what kind of name is that? I mean, that's what you say after you sploogey inside some broad named Joan. <laughs> Joan, ah! <laughs> Anywho, the guy's upset, so God comes down from a cloud in what you call your divine interference. <laughs> and he says to him, Jonah, listen to me. Things are pretty, you know, effed up in this town called Nivea. At, wait, 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 uh, hang on a second. Right. <laughs> I believe the town was called Nineveh. Nineveh, Nivea, whatever. Uh, All right. I know is that uh, God's pretty pissed off at this dump because it's inhabited by a bunch of raghead jerk-offs. Oh, well. And he's getting to ready to nuke the freaking town. So yeah. God, he says to Jonah... Go to Nivea and, you know, spread the word from what you call your God. And then God, he then moves us from Jonah's place on account he doesn't want the other gods to see him hanging out with some guy with a broad's name. <laughs> so what does Jonah do? Does he go to Nivea and spread the word again? Nope. <laughs> Jerk off bum. He tries to hitch a ride on some friggin' boat because he's chicken. He's scared of going to Nivea. That, plus he's pretty resentful of having to actually go all the way to Nivea and talk to these people out of their bad ways when your God, who's magic, <laughs> can just do it with a snap of his fingers like Darren from Bewitched. I mean, I mean, he has to do everything the hard way Darren did. You know, mow the lawn, all that, when he's got a gorgeous witch broad for a wife. But no, <laughs> no magic allowed. <laughs> Jonah figures, what's the point of being a God if you're not going to use it? I mean, what is God? Sterile and impotent or what? All right, all what right. do you do? Blow his wand, split in the Red Sea, and now he's sterile and impotent? Huh? Anywho, Jonah, he's on this boat, see? And he thinks he's hiding from God. Yeah, right, like he can hide from God. God's pissed off at him now, so he makes this big friggin' storm, you know, and Jonah figures, oh, great, now you use the magic. <laughs> so everybody on the boat is blowing chunks and hawking all over the friggin' boat. And then they found out the storm is because God's pissed off at Jonah. So what do they do? They throw his ass overboard. And, and a big fish eats the chicken bastard. Aww. Big fish. Serves him right. So now Jonah's inside this giant fish. And what does he do? He starts praying to God for a rescue. And you know God's like, yeah, right. Screw you, you chicken raghead bastard. I ask you, I ask you to do one friggin' thing and you go AWOL on me. So as far as I'm concerned, you can stay inside Moby Dick and rot. So Jonah keeps praying and praying, and finally he's been inside this stinking fish for three days. Oh. I mean, it was like a long weekend with Joan Collins. All right, move it along. Come on. And, and God starts to feel sorry for the guy, finally. So the, the chicken bastard. You know. oh. So he makes the big fish puke him up on the beach. So there's Jonah. He's just had the crap kicked out of him by God. Like, that's a fair fight. Like, you're going to win. He spent the last three days living as a human chum. And now here he is, puked up on the beach, sitting in a pile of fish bars. Yes, but I believe the redeeming, the redeeming value of the story is that Jonah does go to Nineveh. Yeah. He preaches the good word. Yeah. And he turns the heathens 
into God-fearing citizens. That's right. He right. did. That's right. But what's his reward? Nothing. He's still got a broad's name. Oh, jeez. No. Jonah. <laughs> All right. I mean, that's what you say after you have blue jeans on oh. broad name Joan. Okay. Joan, yeah. All right. Should Thank I you. Talk it about? All right. This has been Earl's Bible Corner. That's what it is. I think we all learned about the story of Jonah and the whale. <laughs> Learning. That's what it's all about. That's right, my friend. Thank you, Earl. You're welcome, yeah, my okay. friend. Okay. All right. A nursing home has been fined because an enormous amount of maggots was found on the head <laughs> of an old lady. On it or in it? On. On. The scalp. Okay. An old lady brain cancer patient. Yeah. The husband of the patient said he discovered the maggots <laughs> when he tried to adjust the cap she wore to cover her tumors and the surgical dressings on her scalp. <laughs> Says the gentleman, I removed the cap and her whole head was full of maggots. The crawling scalp. Yeah. The undulating, waving, her, her head was doing the wave. <laughs> <laughs> well, she died. Oh. Her husband said her last days were haunted by the infestation of maggots. Yeah. Family is suing the center. Imagine that. Accusing the nursing home. This is in San Francisco, by the way. Mm -hmm. Of negligence, elder abuse, fraud, emotional distress. Now, mind you, this old lady's been found to have a maggot head. Maggots on her head. Crawling all about her head. Right. What kind of excuse do you offer for that? You can't. Well, at least it tingles. I wonder if she had, like, one kind of maggots on one side, a dividing <laughs> line down the middle. <laughs> we got a maggots on the other side. Some blue on the Tegrin, other side. Tegrin Tegrin on the the Tegrin maggots. Yeah, I can right. feel something, right. but nothing going on exactly. over here. <laughs> the head of the nursing home described the infestation as an isolated incident and said it did not affect the overall quality of her care. Oh! <laughs> no, it didn't hurt her. She didn't even notice. Yeah. Come on. Only a few patients get the special maggots. Special maggot wing. It's her maggot hat. The center plans to appeal the $22,000 fine levied by the State Department of Health Services. That's it? That's all they get? $22,000? The lawsuit is separate. The lawsuit will be separate. So they'll sue That's a fine that. just by the health department. Yeah. So old lady maggot head. She's dead. That's too but bad. But before she died, she got to die with a head full of maggots. You happy now? Feel good now? Could have been worse. No, it couldn't have. Thank you, folks. It's your fault. I had to do it. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. Our story takes place on board Windshear Airlines. The aircraft was climbing through 20,000 feet, and the stewardesses were making the rounds, pouring cocktails and satisfying those big appetites with minuscule bags of nuts. And as it just so happens, a priest and a rabbi had been seated next to each other in row 15. Indeed, Rabbi Lifshitz, distribution of the money we collect in charge is a very complicated process. But I'll let you in on our little secret. What we do is, we take all the money from the collection plate. Then we draw a giant circle on the ground. We throw all the money up in the air. And whatever lands in the circle is for God. Whatever lands outside the circle is for us. Oy vey, we do things differently at the synagogue. Uh -huh. We take all the money we collect. We throw it up in the air. What God wants, he catches. Whatever he drops, we keep. Oh, indeed. Well, good morning, gentlemen. Uh, can I get you a pillow or a blanket or... Maybe something nice to drink? Ah, uh, no, thank you, my darling. All right, how about you, Rabbi? I'll have a double Jack Daniels on the rocks. Oh, right away. The priest looked sternly at his rabbi friend and said, In my faith, we aren't allowed to drink or have sex. Wait, stewardess, I didn't know I had a choice. <laughs> <laughs> Just then, the captain came on with the announcements for the folks who were flying in first class. 
Closet. Uh, good morning to you, ladies and gentlemen. This is Captain Kamikaze speaking. <laughs> May I take the opportunity to thank you for choosing Windshear Airlines? Right now, outside the aircraft, a rare and lovely view of a flock of endangered whooping cranes migrating toward the Grand Canyon. And tell you what, I'll circle the aircraft around so both sides of the plane get to see. Our flight time today to New York will be four hours and 45 minutes, but you'll hardly notice the time as the wind shear staff of flight attendants shower you with attention, food, cocktails, and oral sex. Oh, yeah. Again, thank you for choosing wind shear. God bless each and every one of you. The captain then switched down the intercom to the coach section of the plane for their announcements. All right, listen up, you worms. I've got my hands full flying this death trap. I don't need any whiny gas bags making it worse for me with your petty little needs. This heap is a flying gas can. Nothing to see outside, just clowns and crowds. Sit down, shut up, we'll get there when we get there. <laughs> the captain then set the microphone back into its receptacle. Thinking he had switched it off, and this, ladies and gentlemen, is when he made his very grave error. Johnny, why don't you fly for a while? After all, you could use the practice after you stalled that 747 over Tokyo and then bailed out and left the poor bass birds to crash and burn. I'm going to take a big old dump. Oh, I've been squeezing this puppy back since we took off. Oh. Then I'm going to go to the back and get that hot new stewardess to give me out there. Oh, my gosh. 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 I wasn't done doing my <laughs> knobber sound effect. I'm not doing it for that long, you bastard. <laughs> Can't throw your weight around like that. <laughs> Gonna go get me a knobber from that new stewardess, Johnny. I'll be right back. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. The captain doesn't realize he's left the microphone on. Said the shock stewardess. Oh, I've got to warn him before he says something unpleasant. <laughs> God. She dropped her cocktail trail and made a beeline for the cockpit. But on the way down the aisle, she tripped on a passenger's foot and landed in a crumpled heap at the foot of the priest, who looked down to the stewardess and said, Slow down, my darling. He said he's got to take a crap first. <laughs> oh. Oh.